Hello, here we are again, the Sudoku guy with guess what? A brand new technique which is so good. I tell you what, this technique will help you find big numbers and small numbers and most important of all, it'll help you find what you missed. You notice up on the top here there's funny little symbols. Don't worry about that. I'll tell you about that later. But have you ever been doing a puzzle and you get stuck? So you leave it, you go off, come back later and you look at it and then you say, Duh! How come I didn't see that before? Well, this technique is going to help you find those things that you missed. It's so easy to miss. So, let's do the puzzle. Here we go. We'll do the horizontal blocks first. Let's take the ones. We have only one. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned, in this puzzle, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to deliberately miss out some things. You ready for that? See if you can recognize them. Okay, as I said, there's only one one. Twos, I'm going to leave. Threes, there's only one three. Four, there's no fours. Fives, there are two fives, a top and a bottom. So in this block, it has to be in the middle. So there it goes there. Sixes, no sixes. Sevens, oh, here's a little technique I'm going to show you. Watch this. In this block, we don't have a seven. We know from that seven that you cannot have a seven there and there because it's already spoken for in that row. Therefore, the seven has to be up in one of these three cells. If that's the case, we look down. Okay, let's take this cell here. We look down, Oop, that seven cancels that one out. In this column, that seven cancels this one out. So therefore, a seven must go there. Now, we have two sevens. We have a top and a bottom, so we can work out where the sevens go across in this block. Well, again, we could have a seven, 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 but let's look down. This seven means you can't have a seven there. This seven means that it cancels out a seven here. Therefore, the seven has to go there. Let's look at eights. Let me see now. Oh, we have all the eights, top, middle, and bottom. Nines. Well, the nines are very similar to the sevens. Let's look at this. Because the nine is there, you can't have a nine in this block anywhere in here because it's spoken for because of that row already having a nine. So therefore, we know for a fact that a nine could go in here. But you know what? Let's look down. And well, let me just, before I put that in, let's look down. Oh, this nine cancels out that cell. So therefore, this definitely becomes a nine. Now we've got two nines, a top and a bottom. We can work out what should go in here. Let's have a look. If a nine was there, uh, there's no nine there. So that would be a little nine. And here there's no nine, so that becomes a little nine. So that, that's a really neat little technique to watch for. Let's look at uh, eights. We got all the eights. We did the nines. Now we'll go to these three horizontal blocks. There's no ones, but there is two. There are two twos. There's a two on the bottom. There's a two on the top. This block doesn't have a two, but we know it has to be in the middle because we've got it filled up here. So it can't be there because of that two, so it can be in those two cells. I don't see a two there or a two there, so we can put it there. Threes, there's only one three. Four, there's two fours. There's a four here, there's a four here. This means a four could go over here. And I look down here and look up and down here, look up and down here, no four. So we can put a little four in each one, which you can do if it's within a, li a line within a block. Remember what we did in a previous lesson? Okay, let's push on now. Fives, there's only one five. Sixes, there's no sixes. Sevens, there are two sevens. There's a bottom and a top. So over here in this empty block, we could have a seven here or we could have a seven there. Very good. 
uh, eight, there's only one eight, nine, there's only one nine. Let's now go to these three horizontal blocks. Ones, there's only one one. Twos, there's only one two. Threes, there's only one three. Fours, there's no fours. Fives, there's only one five. Sixes, there's only one six. Seven, aha, we finally got somewhere. There's two sevens, there's a bottom and a middle, so therefore we know a seven has to be over here. So it cannot be in this one because of that seven, so it has to be over here, which will cancel that out, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, eights, there's only one eight. Nines, we've got them all. So let's move to the, the blocks here on the the vertical blocks. Ones, there's only one one. Twos, there's a left, a center, and a right. They're done. Great. Three, there's only one three. Four, there's no fours, really, big fours that is. Five, there's only one five. Six, there's no sixes. Sevens, we've got them all, a center, right, and left. Eights, we've only got one eight, and nine, We've only got one nine. Let's go to these vertical blocks. Ones. Well, here's an interesting little technique. Have a look at this. This one means that in this block here, you can't have a one there because it's already spoken for in that column. But you could have a one here and here. And because you can put it in two cells in a block, then by, by all means, go ahead. Uh, twos. Well, there's only one two. Threes, there's only one three. Fours, there's only one four. Fives, I missed them out. Sixes, there's only one six. Sevens, they are all there, left, center, and right. Eights, there's two eights, there's a left and a right, so in this block it has to be in the center, which means it has to be down in here and here. Well, that's, that's helpful. Nines. Well, we have a right, a left, and a center, so all the nines are done. Now let's go over to these three vertical blocks. Ones. No ones. Twos. There's only one two. Three. Only one three. Four. Only one four. Fives. There's two fives. There's a five here up on the left. There's a five in the center. So in this block, it has to be on the right, it has to be there and there. Well now I can erase that seven because that's already there, so we put a little five in there and a little five in there because when I look along here, there's no fives. Gosh, look at this, there's a whole row that doesn't even have a number on it. Big, big number that is. Sixes, there's no sixes. Sevens, yes, there's two sevens, there's this one and this one, therefore this one becomes a seven, and some of you may say, well, I saw that ahead of you. If that's the case, that's great. Um, eights, we have two eights, one on the right, one on the left. In here, we'll need to have an eight in the middle, or the center. So we put an eight there and an eight there. That that'll, should help us somewhere along the way. Uh, nines. Well, we have two nines. We have a nine here on the left, a nine here in the center. In this block, it has to be on the right, this section here. But I see there's a nine here, so that cancels out that cell. So that makes this a nine and that a nine. And now we have a matching pair. Very powerful. Well, now, folks, we've now gone through those basic procedures. We now look for rows, columns, and blocks that have only got one or two cells left. And when I look at that, I tell you, I cannot find any. So now what do we do? Well, this is where we come to this next technique I want to teach you. See all these symbols up here? In each case, we have a, a vertical line. In this case, in, in the case of this puzzle, it's a, it's a column and a horizontal line, in this case it's a row, that either cross each other or meet each other. Look at each one of these. They're all right angles and they all either cross each other or meet each other. And so 
with that idea in mind, let me show you how to do the cross meat system. First of all, we'll start at nine and we'll work through to we'll start at one and work through till nine. So let's say we look for a block that doesn't have a one. And I notice that this block doesn't have a one, but we have a one over here and we have a one over here. Let's intersect or meet, have those cross each other and see what happens. If I take this one and go up, it will cancel that cell and that cell. If I take this one and go this way, it'll cancel that cell and that cell. Only two left are that one and that one for a one. Now, I have to say a word of uh, thanks here to one of my students who I was giving a private lesson. Her name was Erica, wonderful lady. She showed me what the pieces of paper and she would put these pieces of paper along the columns to help her find out the empty cells. Now we can't do it with paper on here, so I'm using these pieces of cardboard just to show you what she did. You may not need to do this, but it's just another way of doing it. Here's the one down in here, and there's, and so I'll put one there, covering up our block without the one. Whoops, I'll try another one. <laughs> I'll try that one, how's that? And here is this one, we'll cover that one up by doing this. Now we've covered up this block using that one and using this one to find out that there's two empty cells and we know by doing that that this is a one and that is a possible one. So that's what she was doing, using strips of paper to help her do this. Now I'm not saying you have to do that, but if it helps you, great. Now let's, let's do another one here. Here's a one, we can go a one across here, we can do a one down in here, let's do that one. I'll do this one here going straight down that column. And here's a one that goes across, so we'll do that one too. That one as well, is that better? <laughs> okay. And this block doesn't have a one. But you know, a one could go there, there and there. If that's the case, don't put any ones in. Because, let me assure you, that it will lead to more confusion and it's much better to just put little numbers in two cells within a block. So later on when you get to very advanced levels you could put in three, but for the time being just limit it to two. If it, goes, if it can go in more than two, just leave it, don't put anything in. So let's go down to twos. Well, here's two here. So what she would do, to, she'd do this, she'd put that across there and then she'd, oh, okay, let me, let me do it this way. She'd do this. I just messed up a nine there. She'd put that two there. She'd put a two here, because this is crossing here. She'd put that two there, because there's a two underneath there. Then she would get a one more. She had three pieces of paper, and she would do this. There's a two here, so she'd cover that two up. Oh dear, he's not sticking today. Oh dear. Anyway, let me just hold them for you. There would be a two there and a two there. Now guess what? In this block there's only one place for a two and it's right there. So that's what she was doing with her pieces of paper. You may be able to visually do it just as well. Some people have more difficulty by just looking up, taking this two going up, that cancels this one out. I'll just correct this nine if I may. And then she take this two, this, this two here, that cancels this one out. And uh, you finish, and you take this two and go that way, cancels this one out, and you finish up with uh, a real two. Now what are the ramifications of that? Let's have a look. We have a two on the left, we have a two on the center, so down in this block that doesn't have a two, we'll need a two. Now we can go there or there, but if I look over here, there's a two, so that cancels out that one, so therefore this has to be a two. Excuse my funny two because I'm looking at it sideways. Um, now what's the ramification of that? Well, um, here's a two here, there's a two there, so in this block a two has to be on the top. 
It can be there or there, but if I look up here, there's a two, so that's where the two goes. Now, what's the ramifications of that? Let's see if there is one. Yes, there is. We have a two on the left here, we two in the center, so in this block that doesn't have a two, this becomes the two. Way to go. Oh, let's try and make that a bit neater, shall I? That becomes a two. Well, isn't that cr cr tremendous? Once you get one number, you can get lots of other numbers using TMB and LCR. Let's go to threes now. Okay, let's hope this stick this time. Here's a three, here, and there's a three, there. So if we put a three, a one down there, and another one across here, Ooh, I'll put it underneath, three there, what do we finish up with? We finish up with only one place for a three to go. There it is, there. So you can get rid of the eight and put the three in, and which means that this becomes an eight. Okay, that becomes an eight. Now let's look at the ramifications, if there are any, of that. Yes, here's a three in the bottom, there's a three in the middle. This one doesn't have a three and it has to go up in here. Now what's the ramifications of that, if any? Well, this is in the center. Up here we've got one in the right, so this block has to have it on the left and that's the only place it can go. Great. Let's continue on. We, could, we went that way and up, but what, what about going up this way too? Let's see. Yes, you can. There's a three in the center. There's a three in the left. Therefore, this becomes a three on the right. Now, that, what's the ramification of that? <laughs> Gee, this is neat. Here we have a three on the middle. This is in the bottom. Therefore, in this block, we have to have a three up here which cancels out that one, and therefore this becomes a one. See the advantage of putting little numbers in just two cells? Now, what does that do? Ramifications, this with a three. That three is on the left, this three down here is on the right, so this block has to have a three in the middle, in the center, and that three cancels out this one, so this becomes a three. Now that was incredible. We went right around the whole puzzle Solving threes. I think we've got all the threes now, haven't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine. Okay, we've got, I think we've got all the threes. Fantastic. Now, remember when we did this three, this made, made a one? Let's look at the ramifications of that while we're at it. One, one, bottom, middle, this has to be a one. Now, because of that one, we can't have a one down on this column. Any ones in this block have to be there. So it becomes a 1-8 matching pair. Now because we know that one of these is going to be a 1, that means that this here, right, center, left, this has to be a 1. Now, any ramifications of that? Yes, there is. I've just noticed there's a 1 here and there's a 1 there. Therefore, in this block that doesn't have a one, it has to be there or there. Let's look up. Oh, there's a one up there, so it can't be there, it has to be here. Well, that's neat. Now, because of that one, what's the ramifications of that? I've just noticed something. That one and this one, we have a left, we have a right, that has to be in the center. Well, it's a one for sure. Okay, it's a one for sure. Well, isn't that interesting? We almost went right around the whole puzzle just doing ones. Oh, because of that one, guess what? Yes, we can. Look at that. Oh, I'm getting all excited. Here's that one. That makes this one an eight. Therefore, this becomes the real one. Okay. Now, what's the ramification of that? Let me see. We'll take the ones first. One, bottom, middle, top. Well... Look, here's a one, there could be any of these three cells, but can't be that one because of that one. Can't be that one because of this one. It has to be this one. So we've got a one there. Fantastic. Now, let, uh, there, there's something we can do with the eight too, but I'll come back to that right now because I've seen something here. There's a six that can go in there. That's the only one left. One, two, three, 
four, five, yes, it's a six. We can finish it off. Very good. All this has happened because we did a cross on the three. Amazing, isn't it? So it's getting much easier by doing that route. Um, now let's go to fours. Here's interesting. There's only four here, here, and here. When they're all in one line of, blo line of blocks, it's not easy to do a cross. But I have noticed something. In this column, there's no four, I think. Is that right? One, two, three. There's no four, so this will have to be a four. Now what does that do? Four, four, this becomes a four. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This becomes a six. Boy, that was neat. So let's go to the fives now. Fives, we're going to cross with the fives. And this was in one of those things that I missed, and I want to show you the fantastic way in which the, you can find mistakes, or find, not mistakes necessarily, but find what you missed. Here's a five here. Here's a five here. If we put it over the top of, if we put it over the top of this puzzle, this, this block here, there's only one left place left where it can go. Therefore, you can put a five here in confidence. So this has to be a five. Whoops, I muffed it up there. So this has to be a five. Now, because that's a five, let's look at the ramifications, both directions. Uh, this is a middle, that's a bottom, this has to be there. And while we knew that because there was only one left in that column and we could work it out by counting what was left in this block. But there's more things to watch for. This five means that we have two fives in these columns here, in these blocks here. A five here and a five here, what does that mean? That means it can't be there, it could be there or there. That's a little extra thing to really, really know. Oh, I just told you I'd get come back to the H, didn't I? Um, okay, middle, top, bottom. This becomes an eight. Now, Let's put, well, I can see an, another number there too, but I want to now go on to the sevens. Sevens, we've got all the sevens, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got them all. Can't see any sevens missing anywhere. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, eights. Eight, eight, eight. Well, if I had listen, if I had forgotten to do this eight here, doing the cross method, look what happens. If I do an eight across here, and I do an eight down here, that helps me find an eight. And I do an eight across there. Eight across there cancels this one. Eight down here cancels this one. Uh, Eight, eight, and so we finish up. That has the only place we can really put an eight. So that's another way of checking. Now, nines. Nines, gee whiz now. Well, one of the neat things about the cross meet system is that, is that it helps you confirm that your little numbers are correct. And I've just noticed there's a nine here and a nine here. There's a nine here that goes up here as well. That didn't help a lot. Uh, but because there's a nine here, that crosses out that nine. Because there's a nine there, with that, well, that's all filled up. This nine means that that's the only two places a nine can go. So that's good. Um, let's see, what else other nines? Oh, here's another one. If I take this nine and go across here, uh, and take that nine and go up, well, we, this nine and come down, it's all filled up. That's the only place a nine can go. So that helps you confirm numbers. All the nines are there, all the nines are there. We've got most of the nines already. Now we're at this, we've done the cross meet system right from one to nine. Now what we do is that we look for rows, columns, and blocks that have only got one or two left in them. And there's lots of them. I can see for example, up here, oh gosh, we've got lots of them. Where do I start? Well, here again, there's so many different directions you can go 
in, in these puzzles once you get to this stage for sure. And uh, what I do, maybe a bit different from you, but if it works out, great. Now, in this block here, we have a four and, what's left? One, two, three, four, and five, six. We're missing a four and a six and a four and a six matching pair. We know they're a matching pair because there's only two left. But look, here's a four here. So that immediately changes the story. So this, if this becomes a four, then this becomes a six. Now, what are the ramifications of that? Well, whoops, no, I did it wrong, round the wrong way, didn't I? Uh, hurrying, I've got to slow down here, Robin, slow down. Okay, this becomes a six, and that becomes a four because of that four there. If that's a four, and this is a four, center, left, down in here, we, need, we can put a four there. Now let's uh, do the six, we put in the six, didn't we? Okay, well, guess, in this block here, there's only one left. And it's a one, two, three, four, it's a six. Well, that gives us now two sixes, a six here and a six there. Therefore, the six has to be there. Let me point out once again that when you get a matching pair, no other number could go there. Some of my students would want to put a six, 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 but you can't put one there now because of that six, but they would put sixes all over the place over there. You only, once those are there, no other numbers can go there. Okay, well that, that really got us somewhere. Now let's, this is interesting. If I go with that six, well we've got lots of ramifications of all those things. I did a four to begin with. Let's do the four. Four, four, this becomes a four, which cancels out this four. Um, if that's a four, therefore, oh, we could be there and there and we don't. Oh, what, there's a four up there. If there's a four, here's a cross, look at this cross. Cross there, cross there. The only place a four can go is there. Would you like me to repeat that for you? I know for a fact that that has to be four because here's a four, that cancels out these two. This four cancels out anyone in this one, so that has to be a four. If this is a four and that's a four, then one of these has to be a four. Well, when we put that four in, we didn't lose the ramifications in two ways, and that's something that's easy to miss. When you put a new number, look in the ramification, look at the ramifications going both directions. And I did it down that way, but I didn't do it this way. But while I'm doing it this way, this becomes a four. And that would have helped us know what to do here too. So, because that's filled up. Let's see, well now we're doing sixes. It's bottom, middle, the six can go there or there. Now, what have we got left? Look, this is very interesting. If I look at this here, a six in the bottom, a six at the top, the six has to be here and here, matching pair. And that's going to help, because if I look at this column here, there's only two cells left, and we know that if there's only two cells left, and that's a six, nine, this has to be a six, nine, two. Well, that's interesting. Now, in... Oh, boy, this is so exciting. There's so many things we can, directions that we could go. Um, so we know one of those is going to be five. Well, look at this. If that's the case, because there was a five, five there, and there's a five here, this has to be a five. Now, that's interesting because when I look at that, that means that this over here can't be a five. It turns into a nine, and this comes becomes a five. Let's see if there's a five, nine, five. That nine cancels out this nine, so that becomes a six. This six cancelled out this one, so that becomes a nine. That cancels out this one, so that becomes a six. And that means we're getting very close now. Well, let me see now. What are we missing along this row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a, it's a nine, right? Boy, now we've only got one left in this column. I wonder what it is. Let's work it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's an eight. Yes, that would be correct because we can double check it by saying middle, bottom, and top. And this block has only got one left, and it is, I think, one. Well, let's look at the sixes. One, six, six, six. Yes, I needed to 
check on the sixes and we can do it this way one two three four five six seven and I believe by using this new technique where you take a, a, a vertical and a horizontal and have a meet or cross you can get all kinds of extra big numbers and small numbers and pick up what you missed so that's it for today bye for now